Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade and today I'd like to talk to you about the Animation Collaborative. I've got the shirt and everything. So as most of you know, I'll keep this short because you've probably already seen all the other videos where I've talked about my journey where I was a computer science student, dropped out, went to Animation Mentor, learned animation, got hired at DreamWorks in the training department. So I was not a professional animator. I taught the software and I worked closely with animation, but that wasn't my job to do actual animation on the movies. I then left for my year of risk where I've been doing YouTube and freelance and traveling and trying to do all the stuff that I felt like if I didn't do it now, I might regret it in years to come. So I've just been kind of experiencing life and doing cool stuff for the last year. I have not been animating anything worth sharing or putting on a demo reel, except for very, very minor stuff that I've been doing for freelance projects or things like that. And I've recently moved back to California. I have a new office, as you've probably noticed. And the goal is once again to actively pursue being a character animator at one of the studios. Now I've known for a couple of months that I plan to move back here to re-pursue animation and, and kind of get back into things. And hopefully you saw my CTN video where I interviewed a bunch of different artists, and this is a really good one. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. But I was talking about how I went to Michael Bakarovich's talk, and he runs the Animation Collaborative, the school. So this year when I went to the panel, I had it kind of fresh in my mind. And then I saw they were offering this thing called the Winter Epic Intensive, which was essentially going to be seven full days, one entire week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., all day long, demos and lectures from different animators from Pixar, ILM, Disney, an acting performance consultant that I actually knew from DreamWorks, funny enough. But it was like this one week long thing that just seemed like the greatest learning opportunity I could ask for right around the time that I was moving back, getting settled and about to start animating figured, let's do it. So as far as our review goes, that's pretty much the thing that I'll be talking about as far as like my personal experience with them. But before I get into that, I should just kind of share what the Animation Collaborative is. Because there's a bunch of different ways to learn animation. There's like regular schools that most people are aware of like just having an animation major. And then there's animation schools. Most of those are online. Things like Animation Mentor, which I went to, there's iAnimate, Anim School. I mean, there's a bunch of different online schools. The Animation Collaborative is different because it's not an online school. They don't offer online options. It's an in-person school up in Emeryville, California, which is the Bay Area, it's Northern California. It's literally across the street from Pixar. When you walk out of this door, this is the view. Now I'm gonna be talking about what I know about the school and I might miss things here and there. I don't know everything about it. So I'm gonna put a link in the description down below. So if you're curious about it, you wanna check any of this out, or if you just kinda of wanna fact check me and you know double check on your own what they offer or get more specific, I'm gonna put a link down below so you can head over to their website and check out stuff from the source. But from my understanding, they have what's called the intensives, the master classes, and the workshops, which are three different styles of learning. They have the intensives, which are kind of a five day uninterrupted thing. Mine was the epic intensive, so it was a seven day version of this. And then there's the master classes, which are usually two days. I think they're usually on weekends, but I don't know. But they're two days all day, demos and lectures. And then there's the workshops. And your workshops are more traditional, probably like 12-ish weeks, or I think slightly less or more in the summer, I don't know. But the workshops are like full classes that would go over a longer period of time, where the intensives and master classes are kind of a condensed version of those workshops that shove it all down to something manageable if you only have a weekend or you only have a week to really cram in all the information. So just different options depending on what you need. And the topics range from animation specific stuff, there's stuff on just Maya, there's acting, there's body mechanics, there's character design, visual storytelling, there's a bunch of different things and you can check out their website for like the actual details of what they might be offering now versus what they had in the past. And I don't wanna get into too many of the details but I know they offer a bunch of stuff around story, animation and design. So anyways, I went to the seven day epic intensive. It was insane. It was amazing. I put an Instagram post out there and I had counted at the time, I think I had like 172 pages of notes or something. I'm not gonna check, it's fine. But I took so many notes, like I learned so much stuff. So the way it worked is we had seven days and six instructors. And the way they split it up is we had the main guy, Michael Makarovich, who is a Pixar directing animator. He's been there for like 15-ish years, so a long time. And depending on the day, he would either do demos or lectures or a combination of both. So we'd have lectures specifically on the graph editor or on browse or eyes or polishing or his workflow that he uses. And he would actually just animate stuff and in front of us. He would sit there, he'd open Maya, he'd open like a blank scene, set up you know, the rig and whatever obstacles needed to be there if it was like a body mechanic shot. And then he would just animate it. And he would talk through the choices and talk through why he's doing certain things. We would see him with his like hotkeys. He'd explain like, oh, these are the tools I use. Here's what I do with them and here's why. And it was just so cool to see someone like working in Maya, doing the thing that like everyone always talks about it and everyone always shows like techniques for it and you learn a lot of the, the theory behind it. But it's very rare that you actually sit there and just watch someone work. And it's not like a Twitch stream where, you know, you're seeing someone's workflow, but you can't see their keyboard. Like he's sitting right there and he's explaining, oh yeah, I did that thing because of this. And we can say, wait, why did you do that? Can you do it again? And you can just ask questions live and he just answers it and does it. And it was just awesome. So there were demos and he did the body mechanic stuff. He also did an, an entire acting shot essentially. And it was insane how fast he was. Like he, his workflow is so 
specific and fast and like efficient. What I assume a normal person would have done in like a day, maybe two days, he would do it in like 40 minutes. And then like an hour and a half later, he was essentially like, he would call it blocking, but it was better than what most people call splined. At least when you're kind of on the aspiring level and you haven't gotten the job professionally, usually it takes longer to achieve something that's pretty decent. But for him, like such a short amount of time would yield something way better than most of us would get on our own in like a whole week's worth of work. And that's, you know, it depends on who you are, how fast you work and your choice, whatever. But the point is he was fast enough that he could do so much stuff and explain all of it without making it feel like it was like a waste of time or like it took too long to do it. Like I've never seen so much animation accomplished in such a short time that I understood everything he was doing and why. He's also just a very good instructor. And so that really came through in all the lectures. He would talk about different things. We could ask questions just on the fly. And there were about 26, 27 of us in the class. I wasn't expecting such a big group. And I think the workshops are usually smaller because when you have like feedback and critiques and you're submitting work and you're getting feedback in the like the workshop versions of the classes they have, they're smaller groups so that you get more one-on-one -on -one time. But for us, it was less about, you know, doing work and submitting it. We didn't bother. We just absorbed everything we could. So there were more of us. There were plenty of questions. Everyone had different insights and different like, some people do game animation, freelance. Some people worked in studios, some people haven't. We had beginners who had never touched Maya. We had people who had been doing it for years and we're just trying to get more insight, I guess. So it didn't matter what stage anyone was at, everybody got a ton out of it. And there was just, it was so much information in like in the best possible way. And there's no recording of any of the stuff. So I have nothing to like share with you here as a demo but you know, you take as many notes as you can and, and you ask a ton of questions and it was, it was fantastic. But we still had five other lecturers also. One of the days was entirely with Sean Kelly, who if you guys know anything about Animation Mentor, you probably know that Sean Kelly is one of the co-founders and he was also in that Adobe video. But he has been an animator at ILM or Industrial Light and Magic for years. ILM is the VFX company that hits Lucasfilm, now owned by Disney, and they work on all the Marvel movies, they work on all the Star Wars films. I think they're the only people who do the Star Wars films, but I don't know that for sure. I don't know, but they do a lot of the live action animation integration work. So he talked about something that was really interesting to me because I love visual effects. So I've never heard a lecture about VFX animation and why animating for live action environments is different than you know pushed or cartoony or pose based workflows. I don't know. So it was something different than I had ever heard before. And I didn't even really consider it as like something you could get lectures on. So it was just super, super cool to learn about how ILM specifically does their animation stuff. And it wasn't about like, this is what ILM does. It was more about these are kind of the things you think about when you're doing that type of animation or that style of motion and that kind of stuff. And then for two other days, we would split it between two and two other instructors. So one day was two people and another day was two people morning and afternoons. One day we had Daniel Klug, who is a Disney supervising animator. And he was the one who gave all the talk about like Maya practical information, like cause Disney uses Maya to animate. So he shared all kinds of crazy workflow enhancing things, whether it's like technical Maya stuff, settings to change to make things work faster, or I don't know, you know stuff like that whether it's scripts and tools, a video for that, if you haven't seen it yet. Or he also didn't, he didn't just talk about Maya. He also talked about like animation and creating believable performances. He showed us his, his work from before he got hired and told us his story. But he told us a lot of like his personal journey and things he overcame and things he had to struggle with that were relatable and useful for us to know and kind of understand going into all of this. So the whole class was very personal. Everyone was very connected to the instructors as they talked. You got a lot of information since no one was being recorded and it wasn't an online thing where you, you don't know, there's like a screen behind everybody. It was a unique experience to have kind of that in-person connection and you know, there's breaks and you chat with the person and then you all go to lunch and you know, sometimes they would come to lunch with us and we all just get food and talk. So it was definitely something special. And then we also had Tracy Burns who is a performance acting consultant and, and she's awesome. Alan Simpson and Tracy Burns are two acting performance consultants that DreamWorks would bring in for different things. And so I was in one of their classes at DreamWorks once with the animation department. So I kind of knew her a little bit from that, which is a really, really funny story I'll save for another day. But she was awesome. She brought in like different clips of like movies and films and you know theater performances and different things that we would analyze what made performance believable versus when they were not so well acted and kind of what the difference is and how you can apply that to your animation. So she talked a lot about character, performance, subtext, if you guys have seen the subtext lecture, very useful. And then another day we had Victor Navone and Tal Shazman, I think is how you say it. 
hopefully that's right. Both Pixar animators and super talented. And it was awesome because you get to see like the breakdown. You get to see people's blocking of you know where they went, the notes they got from different people, whether it was a director note, a supervisor note, how they handled that, what happens if they clashed and you had different opinions and like how do you navigate that? You know, what changes do you make? What stuff do you do on your own once you've addressed the notes? And then like, okay, cool. How do you take it further then? having gotten certain notes, and then you gotta make your own creative choices. And then you see the different versions once they've done all that. And like, okay, take that out, add this, and you see what they do. Cause you hear about dailies and you hear about getting notes from directors and people, but rarely do you ever see the shots and how the animation evolved with that process. Which again is something that you can't do online because if it gets recorded and gets leaked or something, it becomes a whole liability issue. It's a whole legal thing for the studio. So that is one of the larger reasons why the whole class is online. So my opinion is that if you are considering a class at Animation Collaborative and you're like, oh, well, I have to you know, fly to San Francisco and I gotta stay there for a couple of days and get an Airbnb, it is 100% worth it. Holy crap, yes, do it. Don't even think twice. Like, And I'm not saying that any one school is better or worse than another, like I'm not getting into that. But I do wanna say that this school is super, super cool. And it, I think it's a, people see it as more of a barrier sometimes with like, oh, well, it's, it's not online. I have to go there. Do I really wanna do that when I could go to an online school? And you know, I've done both at this point and both were super useful and I wouldn't like trade one for the other at all. I'm super stoked that I went to Animation Mentor and I would not change one part about that. But I'm also super, super glad I did this at the Animation Collaborative and I would absolutely take another class at either one. They're both different. Having an online school, an online community and all of that is really cool and it gives you a lot of stuff that you would never get on your own. Going to an in-person school gives you different stuff. They're both unique and special in their own ways, but if you live in California and it's easier for you to go to this, you should absolutely take a class there. If you are out of state or even international, you can still do it and you should save up and like try to do one of the bigger workshops. Like I think this whole seven day Epic Intensive, we did one in January, it was the winter one. And then we give a ton of feedback because they're super receptive to the feedback. They wanted to know everything we loved, everything we hated, if there's something we wanted to change, if we wanted different instructors, if we wanted different topics, whatever. They were really open to making sure that this is the best thing it can be, which is really nice. And since it is a small group of people at the school, they can make those changes really easily. And so I think they're trying to do like a summer version of this. So if you are interested in this whole thing, I've just talked about like the seven day intensive. I think they're doing one in the summer this year. So in 2019, I don't know if they'll do it in the future. I have no idea, I have no details. So again, the website, link in the description, but, but Mike talked about how he wanted to do a summer version with seven days, again, with possibly different topics, different people, different, who knows? It could be the exact same thing. It could be completely different. I have no idea, but I can tell you definitively from my experience that it is 100% worth it. If you are a beginner, you've never touched Maya, you've never animated a thing in your life and you go to this, we had people in our class who were, they were in that position, you'll learn so much stuff that's gonna like set you ahead of anybody else in any of your classes. You're gonna really have so much information that's going to help you along your way. And if you are like super far along and you're already really advanced, maybe you've already taken an entire animation program or you're halfway through or whatever, also it's gonna like push you that much farther and you're gonna understand more stuff so it might even be more useful. So it really doesn't matter your skill level, it's just great. So again, I'm not comparing schools. I don't wanna get into any of that stuff, but I do wanna say the Animation Collaborative has some awesome, awesome stuff. But I went to this Epic Intensive with the goal of kind of re-energizing myself, getting fired up again and ready to animate some new stuff. I feel so much more prepared. Like everything I would have animated before going to this class, I would have thrown away at this point because I learned so much stuff that was just like, no, no, no. Everything I was gonna do before, trash. Like I feel way more prepared now having learned all that, absorbed it all. I mean, I'm just I'm just stoked that I went. And that's not to say that like whatever I learned before wasn't good or something. I just, I don't know. I just feel like everything I learned took me to another level. And whatever that level might be, I have no idea, but I feel really good about it. And I'm really glad I went. It was super worth it. I'm probably dragging this on longer than it needs to go. I'm just really stoked about it. And I hope that comes through genuinely. And so, you know, just to say it so that I don't get any weird comments about it. I'm not being paid to say anything. And also everyone I met at the class was so cool. Like there were you know 27-ish of us and Everyone was super, super fun. We all would get lunch together in different groups. We'd go to different places depending on the day. Some of us would get drinks afterwards. We went out, I think as a big group one time and then smaller groups of us on other nights. But now I have a bunch more like animation friends and that's always kind of hard to find is like, where do you meet other passionate, excited people? An event like this where everybody is passionate enough to actually go to the school and stay for a week, especially the ones who aren't local. Some of them are local and they have great recommendations of where we should go. And, it was just great because we were all just there in it together, learning a bunch of stuff and just, it was super cool. But all of us were very much students the entire time, which is totally how you have to be. And it was just, it was such a fun experience. I can't even like say enough good things about it. So anyways, if you're thinking about taking a class at the Animation Collaborative, 
I 100% absolutely recommend anything they've got going on there. So pay attention to that school, pay attention to what they're doing. If they offer something that you're interested in, really think about it, save up for it, and go. And if you guys have any other questions about the class or anything, throw them in the comments down below. I'm happy to jump in and answer anything that I may not have covered in this video. I'm hoping I got everything, but if I didn't, let me know and we'll talk down there. And if there's anything in this video that I mentioned, any topics that they shared at the workshop that were particularly interesting to you, that you're like, oh, that sounds really cool. Let me know in the comments what it was. I'm curious what you might be more interested in based on what you heard. I can make sure they know just as a general feedback thing. I'm curious, they might be too, but definitely let me know in the comments. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for any of you who are considering it or maybe weren't before, but are now. Uh, again, links in the description below. Also, personal victory. We're going on three weeks of successful weekly uploads. So hey, go us. I haven't been able to do this since the very beginning of the channel. And those videos were not very good. If you were here for the original videos, thank you for sticking around. That was, that was not a great time in video quality history. I like to think we've gotten a lot better since then. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you want to see more videos, some stuff here, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next week for the next video.